Hello and welcome to the All About Valley podcast. This podcast is sponsored by KO Financial, specialists in mortgages and protecting your family's finances. Whether you're looking for the best mortgage for you or want to make sure you and your family aren't struggling if you're seriously ill or pass away, call KO Financial on 0141 447 0290 or email advice at ko-financial.co.uk. I will include this information in the show notes. Oh, we're rolling, we're rolling. Right, so now I can start talking shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll let you talk shit. Yeah, it's for me, man. Um, it's no, me. but, uh, right, so today we're here with Jason. Jason Reed for ICW. And uh, hopefully he doesn't beat me up. Because I'm not really prepared for that. No, we're in a good mood. We're in a good mood, man. No worries. Aye, we true. Um, <laughs> no, but this is, it's great to have you here. I know you're a really busy person. And this is like the first time people that watch my podcast will be like, what's going on with the studio here? We've got all the new stuff in and the TV and all that. And uh, it's great to have you here. And um, like I was saying to you before, I'm a big wrestling fan. And, and I was talking to, when I was talking to Dallas, he was speaking very highly of you. And how, and how like, the, we were talking about like, the next generation of ICW wrestlers. Mm. So he was just talking about the idea that when you look at like, what they built, what you have built as a company. Yeah. They're essentially the biggest wrestling company in the UK. I can't think of anything bigger than... I mean, even probably Europe, man. I, you know, I would go as far to say as ICW is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest in Europe. Um, and I think the work we've done recently, especially through the last sort of 12 months where we've had the lockdown, we've not been able to perform in front of a live crowd, which is the sort of, you know, the, the, main, uh, the mm-hmm. main drive behind the shows. We've had to adapt... Um, bring in different guys and work with with different guys to ensure that we can still you know produce this content which is going worldwide on the WWE network and Peacock TV in America. Um, so yeah, I mean Dallas is right that the last uh, few months to a year has been huge for the company. Um, and you know what, I'm excited to see what's going to happen when things sort of get back to normal when we can start running these shows in front of crowds. Um, because the the guys that have almost carried it through this sort of pandemic era, if you like, um, have, uh, have have risen to the top. And it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting times to, to be in ICW and it's exciting times to be a fan of wrestling as well, you know? Definitely is. I mean, you look at all the all the new, I mean, AEW and all the things that are happening and it's very, it's very much, seems like there's a boom going on everywhere. There is, yeah. I mean, and y- you get these, um, these types of conversations where people think that, you know, wrestling might be dying out. You know, remember when uh, WWE came over and, and introduced WWE UK and NXT UK, and it was like, ah, oh, wrestling as we know it's gone. I don't believe that for a second, man. Um, whenever, you know, w- a company like WWE comes and, and, and implements their sort of regimes over here, that's amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, they're, they're the top dogs in the business and they're coming over here and they're setting up you know, their own brand in the UK. I think that's amazing. And like you touched on, AEW as well. It's just great, you know. There's so much variety of wrestling just now. Um, and there's not a rule that says anywhere you must like one wrestling brand or one wrestling show and you can't watch any others, you know. Yeah. And that's what's so good because there's stuff for everyone. You know, if you're into that more independent type scene on TV, then AEW. If you're into the sort of the, the TV sort of product that WWE run, then you've got Raw and SmackDown. And then there's everything else in between as well with likes of ICW and, and different companies on the indies. So, yeah, man, it's um, it's a great time to be involved in wrestling and a great time to, to be a fan, for sure. 100%. And how, how hard has it been having to perform with the fans? Because... It's always felt like that's like the bread and butter of the whole thing. Definitely. I mean, this is the thing that you, you know, you look forward to. You always envision going out in front of a, a packed crowd, um, you know, cheering or booing, whatever it is. That's the buzz that you get. You know, you go out, you break through that curtain and then you see a, 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 a an arena full of fans and you get that buzz. Um, and I think when when the the pandemic shut everything down, we were all kind of missing it. And then we were when we were able to start filming um, in that controlled environment behind closed doors, it really brought out those new challenges. So um, there isn't that that buzz of the crowd. You know, you're you're halfway through matches, and usually when the the crowd's coming up and towards the end of the match, when the crowd's high and everyone's standing, there's just nothing. Yeah, it's just dead silence, and that's where the challenge is because you know you've got to adapt to that. You know, some people might go out there 
and it might feel feel weird and it does it might feel awkward and it might just feel you know you don't really feel comfortable but you know what man that's that's a challenge in itself isn't it that's wrestling there's plenty of challenges and when we get out the other side of this you know that's going to be another big uh, a big notch on the uh, the the CV list you know to say that we've we've went through that we can adapt we can perform without a crowd you know still tell that story engage the crowd watching from home as well and that's a cool thing as well you know Definitely, because one of the things that really impresses me about it right, is when when you look at wrestling, people obviously the assumption in people's head, I think this the 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 thing that they assume is that it's not as pain free, you know, there's not there's not as and obviously when you look into it you realise that this ring, it's not padded, it's not it's not an, it's not nice to take a flat back bump and, and not having to go through all that. But when I'm when I'm watching it I always thought that maybe the, the Getting through that, the adrenaline rush of the crowd is what helps that sort of pain. Do you think you feel you feel like you feel the bumps more? You feel like you, you feel more of a uh, it's more of a challenge to actually get through the physical the physical element of the match without the crowd. Man, it's a really good question. To be fair, a really really good question. Um, and here's the thing: you're you're still going to get so when I burst through that curtain and there's no crowd, there are no fans, and it's just the TV cameras and, and the ring and whatever there's still that buzz because you're still going out there to do what you love and do what you've loved for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, however long it is. So you still have that buzz. Yeah, you don't have the buzz and the roar of the crowd, but there's still that something deep down inside that is just, you know, you're that kid living your dream. You know, you watched this grown up on TV and now you're actually going to do it. And what's cooler is that we have this TV production now where we're filming for the WWE Network where we didn't have that before on, on the same level when we had the crowd. So we still have that buzz, but it's slightly different. I mean, in terms of the the sort of pain side of things, it's always going to be there. You know, you, you can never really go through a match in plain sailing without any niggles or bruises. You know, my physiotherapist probably thanks me for keeping them in business from time to time. But, um, you know, it is what it is. You know, at the end of the day, that adrenaline does get you through it. The next day is probably when you start to feel the aches and pains and stuff. But then that's when that's why you got to train smart. You know, you've got to make sure that you're prehabbing and not not rehabbing. You know, we prehab before to prevent these injuries. And uh, yeah, we got we got to be smart and and stay safe. And that allows us to have this sort of long career that that we all we all plan to have. But it's it's a very important side of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's no room to skip the mobility side of things. You need to get that in there. There's the, exactly, man, exactly. And you know what? I was probably guilty of of skipping that before. You know, I used to be uh, the the gym bro. You know, <laughs> Monday was chest day, Tuesday was arms, Wednesday was chest, Thursday was buys, and 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 whatnot. But but now, you know, I, I quickly realised, and and I'm glad that I was able to realise it so early on because, you know, if I was to continue on like that, you know, doing the types of schedules we do. And the the things that we're we're asking our body to go through, I, I wouldn't be here for much longer, man. I would I would be able to still be around wrestling, but would I be able to partake in the schedule that I'm doing now? Probably not. So that's a huge thing. And um, you know, for me, it's all about who you surround yourself with. Um, you know, if you if you've got yourself surrounded with guys who have similar mindsets, but then they want to, you know, sort of branch out, then that's great. But if you're surrounding yourself with guys who are winners. You know, they're they're researching, they're investing in themselves, they learn about all these things, then they're going to feed that down into you, and then eventually you're going to be a better person, you know, and I love stuff like that, man. It's, I'm really, really big on surrounding yourself with winners, because I think that's huge in this business, for sure. I couldn't agree more. I think I think that's actually really relevant for life overall, really. Like, who you are around is what you become, you know? It is, man. I can't remember who it was. Um... There's a guy, a, a really, um, a really famous, successful guy. One of his most famous quotes is, "Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future." I don't know if you've you've heard or seen the clip, but he just says it over and over again. He's like, "Show me your friends, I'll show you your future," and it's it's so true because, and, and it's probably something you don't realize, you know, in your younger years, when you surround yourself with with, uh, you know, groups of friends or whatever, and you you go around sort of different groups, and it just kind of takes this moment where you're 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 checking your audit in your circle is what I like to call it. You got audit your circle on a regular basis. Because if you've got guys in here that are, you know, drip feeding little bits of negativity in, you know, they're 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 t 
telling you about all these rumors that they heard about you and you know they can't be all they're working out you know they're, they're about this about that it's not good for you man you know you got to surround yourself with guys who are positive they want to do better for you better for themselves and they want to drive and be as successful as they possibly can be and that's a huge thing like you said in life wrestling business day-to-day you know family it's all the same man you know you've got to you've got to look after yourself and, and drive yourself to the, uh, the best of your ability for sure You've obviously got like a really clear mindset also what you want to achieve and like you've really driven that way. But you spoke about how when you're younger, you maybe don't realize that. Was there a point where you had to realize that, but it became apparent that you were in the wrong circle and you had to change things? For sure, man. Um, you know, I, probably even the last three years, I would say. Um, I, if we go back further than three years, I was probably part of a wrong circle. Um, I never had the same drive that I've got now. Um, I would look for excuses to skip the gym. Um, I'd maybe have two or three days of, of, of eating good, um, hitting the targets and then I would reward myself with three or four days off. Doesn't make any sense. Um, too many excuses, um, was in my life. Again, this was not a, this was probably a thing two or three years ago. Um, and I just had this kind of moment of almost a moment of realization. It didn't happen overnight. It was probably triggered by something that happened, you know, in, in personal life that kind of gave me that, that kick up the backside, you know, to, to go out and, and start making these changes because if I didn't make those changes, I probably wouldn't be here speaking to you now. I wouldn't be doing the yeah. things I'm doing with ICW. Um, I wouldn't have what I have in, in personal life and, and family life or whatever. Um, and I think everyone goes to that point in life where they just have that, you go through that really, really low period in life. And it happened for me a few years ago and I was convinced that, nah, you know, I didn't want to wrestle. Um, wasn't really keen on working out. Um, wasn't bothered about being successful and then eventually over the course of maybe a few weeks to a month I eventually started surrounding myself with different people who were doing successful and doing well for themselves and eventually picked up on habits that they were doing all along which they've probably learned from other people as well and it just keeps going on and on and on and eventually I was able to kind of get myself in this routine um, that, that I kind of strive to, to be successful in. and it, it works man have I learned it all have I done everything I want to do absolutely not <laughs> but it's a start you know well that's where it all begins it begins with a change of how you look at how you're looking at your life and it's so weird to me because I've had so many different guests on with, and that, that, would, that would come across different from me and, and we all we all have we all went through different things they all talk about the same idea that you go through those low times and you have to come through it to see yourself in a different more positive way yeah you've obviously done that totally man and you know what it's so easy for me to sit here and say you have to be positive you just have to you know go and get new friends it's not that's not i'm saying it's not as easy as that we all you and i both know that's not how it happens but perspective has a lot to do with it you know if you have that mindset and again it's not something you get overnight um, but I always try and just remember, you know, what it felt like before, um, you know, I wasn't successful, I wasn't doing well in wrestling, um, I wasn't in great shape, I didn't look after myself, I didn't have a good relationship with friends and family. And I remember back to that and, you know, see when my alarm goes at half past five in the morning to get up for the gym, I'm like, oh, let's just lie in a couple of hours. I just remember what it was like to not do that mm-hmm. because yeah. I, I know what it's like not to do it. Now I want to find out what it's like if I do it consistently Mm -hmm. for years you know yeah and that's the thing it's all about a perspective shift you know we could be sitting in a car we could be looking at one side and it could be pissing with rain um it could be doom and gloom we could be looking at a wall that's all you know grime spray paint or whatever and we could look over the other side of the window and it could be you know green hills sun shining great weather and it's just you know we're in the same car yeah that's all it is you just got to shift your perspective and look out the other window when you think things are bad, yes, they are. Are they going to get better? Yes. You just got to have that shift of perspective, and it, you know, it does a lot for you, man. Mate, that was really well put. I'm like, that was blown, up, blown away. I know, we can always wrap up now. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that to me, well, like, <laughs> no, because maybe think about like when you ever seen that clip of the Rock where he's talking about how when he when he when he wakes up, he he always pictures himself with his back against the wall every time he's yeah to yeah. work out. So he yeah. try, so he puts himself in the mindset of. I'm still poor. I'm still mm-hmm. broken away. Totally, yeah. And, you know, that's a common figure. And it's obviously reached unbelievable limits of success, but it comes back to just putting himself back into that mindset of when when things were tough and remember that you'd never want to be back in that spot. 
and to be back to, in order to not be back in that spot you need to do things that are difficult you have man it's all about you know being outside your comfort zone i listened to a guy called ryan serhant he's uh he's a, an american and he, he's a he sells real estate in new york um and he is very big on this whole mindset and, and positive attitude and, and and work ethic and stuff like that and he um so he moved to new york when he's quite young and he wanted to sell properties he went to this he went to the store and he went to get some groceries it was like 20 dollars, and his card declined right it was like his first week in new york um and then he got the subway home and he's he remembers like crying the whole way home he was like this feeling just sucks this is horrible like i hate it i hate it i hate it and he was like you know i could go home i go back and live with my parents wherever they were from or i can never ever feel like this again and i can work hard I can, I can, you know, meet five new people every day and introduce myself and, and explain that I'm here to sell properties. Can I do anything for you, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, now he's sold like, I think he sold like a billion pounds or a billion dollars worth of property, like in the last two years. Like it is insane. The, the, the sort of speed that he's progressed in life, man. And I love that shit, you know, apologies. For, can we swear on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, man, I should have asked him <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah so no, sorry. I love that, man, yeah. because it's just, anyone can do it. And it's just such a mindset. And the thing about The Rock um, he always remembers where he came from and that, you know, he could easily go back to being broken, evicted or whatever. And that's what keeps him driving. I think that's so, so cool, man. I love it. It's it's so important to life. And, and when we're talking about this, it just made me think about like that example you're given when you look at like actually shifting perspective and shifting your mindset. The way to get more people, you know, so that kind of, I feel like in a way, in order for that to happen for me and you, certain certain things have to happen in a way. Yeah. For you to realize that, yeah. But in order for more people to realize, because a lot of people don't realize this, mm. and, they, and it takes them a lot longer. They get mm. to, you know, they wake up at forty one day and they're like, "Oh my god, what we've been doing for all this." Right. And I think that the the way to accelerate that process is to normalize the fact that, you know, things do suck and did di like difficulty mm. does exist and yeah. life's going to get hard. Mm -hmm. And I think in the society that I'm in, we we almost shy away from that and we try and promote this utopia of life man totally and i could not have put that better myself and it's so true you know because this this sort of sh shift in perspective that i had a few years ago it was like we touched on it's probably one of the lowest points i've ever went through but i had to get that low point to get all the high points that came after it if i hadn't have went through that if i'd have went back and, and at the time i thought you know i would do anything to just not go through this pain right mm -hmm. but if i didn't go through that then I wouldn't get the highs after it. So we could have went went back and then changed it and went through the same sort of lull. And my, well, my life would have just plateaued out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I had to go down to go back up. And that's what I try and explain, you know, any sort of friends or family. And we all go through struggles, man. And yes, they're brutal. They're the worst. We feel like nothing else really matters, but it does. And if you just keep going, it will 1 million percent get better because you have to have those lows to get high after and that's the that's the exciting thing and i know it's not exciting when it happens but when you're going through this lull something big's happening and something big's coming your way and it's about just remembering that as as hard as it gets it's going to get better and it will be worth it 100 percent. because at any time that you've had a low i've had a low moment in my life there's always been a good thing happening after that and it's, it's always built into different things like even even this podcast itself like came from me having a really low moment in my life and 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 it sparked us this want to be more and do more and be, that began with me talking in a microphone and now we're here so it's all it can all just steamroll like that in, in this amazing way and i think that your perspective on it is obviously really strong for somebody like to be that young and to have that idea especially in the industry you're in it's so important to have that strong mentality of knowing who you are and knowing where you come from because Going from doing those up and ups and downs and things like that, like I think it gives you this, it gives you a better idea of why it's important and what gratefulness is. You know, like being grateful is the key to life. I feel like because it, because when you get success and you've had those low points, you understand why that's why you should be grateful for the moment and grateful for where you're at. And I think that that is something that that without those really tough times, you don't really realize that until and you, like you say you just sort of like lull through life and until you get to a point where you realize that what you've been doing and you almost you almost have like a for lack of a better way of putting it a spiritual awakening in a way totally man and i can't like i can't agree more 
with that whole awakening thing. It, it's scary when you think about it when it happens, you know, and it's almost like, it obviously doesn't, it, it's not as bad, but you can relate that to maybe getting punched in, in the nose for the first time, right? Um, if you if someone sits you down and you've never been punched in the nose ever before, right? And someone says, look, you're going to get sat down and whoever it is is going to come up and they're going to punch you in the nose. Your nose is going to break. There's going to be blood everywhere. It's going to be sore. You're going to be scared. You're going to be scared, 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 scared. But after it, right? It's like, right, okay, cool. Well, we got through that. And then what else? It sucks at the time, but, you know, it's only going to, it's only temporary. It's not going to last forever. We will get through the other side of it. Um, and it's about just, you know, having that. And it is, I, I'm, I'm honestly grateful that I went through those, those dark times and they, they were bad. You know, there was points in my life where I thought, nah, not really worth it for me. I don't really see anything in my future that that's, that's worth sticking around for. Um, and that's personal, man, you know, but I'm, I'm thankful that I went through that because if I, if I didn't go through that, um, then you know, I wouldn't be here speaking to you today. And that's, and I think that's, that's cool. You know, we all have our own paths and we all have our own downs and ups and it brings us together to have conversations like this. And when we go away today, after we're finished here today, we'll think, wow, you know, we're so lucky. You know, we've went through these, these dark times and, and down periods in life, but how amazing is it to just be here speaking to someone else that's done it? And we've we've rode the storm and look where we are now, you know. And I think that's one of the coolest things in life, man. That I mean, honestly, like I'm like I'm I'm really blown away by your your whole perspective. Um, just because, like, I think that people might look at you and be like, you know, he's young, good looking, he's doing doing well in wrestling. And <laughs> Give me like, that twenty pints when we're finished. It's like, <laughs> and it's like. No, I was just saying people, people, people judge people by how they look, and they go, "That guy, that guy is not being through." Like you know, they, they may assume. Mm. I think there's this sort of assumption that if you're if you're doing well, you've not been through that sort of struggle, and that's what I think. These kind of conversations are so key in the sense of actually diving deeper than that and being like, "No, we're all we all go through these things," and and the people that are the people that succeed in this are the ones that can get through it. And actually see a different perspective. Even that, the, even the the challenge I was in, the one thousand k challenge, it made me go quiet on social media for like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I feel like I've just came at home and I'm alive again. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> my god. Um, oh. But no, it was like it was it, that whole, that whole thing was. You know, I thought I was really going into it. I thought I would I'd really dealt with all my stuff, and I was mentally solid, and the, you know, I, I wasn't going to have any issues with it really. That wasn't the case. That wasn't no. the case. And you know what, man? It's the same idea, you know. And it, we've got to sort of take it down a few levels in in terms of the sort of, I guess, the, the two events side by side. But when you're going through that, and you know you're rowing away, and you know you've got however long left to go, you're like, oh, man, this is this is awful. I don't think I can finish this today. Or you know what? You know, I'll just do the rest tomorrow or whatever. It's the same idea, right? Yeah. yeah. You can do it. You just got to persevere and get through it. And boy, when you finish that, how good did it feel, oh, right? man, you have no idea. Exactly. You're, <laughs> probably hurting. You're probably hurting, but you know what? See, when it comes to doing the next challenge or whatever it is that you need to do, you've done that. So you know yeah. you can do it. And that's cool. You know, that gives you that sort of, uh, that experience in, in life almost, you know? Well, yeah, because I think what surprised me more than the physical thing, because I knew that doing that marathon every day for 30 days was going to be sore. <laughs> just right? about, yeah. But like... The the idea that in my mind I kind of was beating myself up a lot, really, you know, mm. more 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 um, more har harshly than I would have expected, and just mm. kind of like you're not going to be able to do this. This is not, yeah. and so so there was a lot of negative self talk going on mm -hmm. during the month, and like having to come through that. But I think there was genuinely points where I was like, "There's no way I'm going to do this." Everybody mm. thinks I'm going to do it, and I'm like, yeah. I, "I've done like I got to like 200k, and I and I was like." There's no chance I'm gonna finish this, but but not but not like in a funny way or a positive way, just in a really like negative on myself yeah. type of way. Mm. And and even up until the first, even up until the last hundred meters, I thought I wasn't gonna finish it. Do you know what I mean? So coming, th w one of the things that has really taught me is that throughout that whole thing, it it did get it got quite dark for me in terms of where my mind was at and how mm. I was feeling about myself. Yeah. But actually coming through it, you go, 
you, you really can just come through. You, if you just keep going, if you just keep hustling, you will get through it. You've got to take yourself to that other place, man. I call it the happy place. You know, yeah. when I'm working out at, you know, uh, back at five in the morning and, uh, you know, I, I'm the the guy I train with is also in, in wrestling and he stacks up these uh these plates on on the squats and I'm like oh you know I do one I'm like there's no way I can I can do eight of these for <laughs> yeah. four for four sets but you can you just got to take yourself away from where you are this pain that you're feeling um and the stress on your body and just think right get yourself through it just do you know two more then when we get to two more it's just three more yeah. and then we just got one more then we're done you know, exactly. it's just about little sort of um, milestones, if you like, throughout these these types of events, and we can just get through it. It's just all all about that perspective again, man. Huge on perspective, but it's true. It's hundred percent true because yeah. because the more that you the more that you build up that the more that you do these things that are really tough and you come through it, you're building up a, you're building up a mentality of yeah. I can I can weather the storm, I can get through all this totally, man. And it makes life easier because I think everybody talks about wanting to deal with stress. And how to deal with stress in my life is so stressful. I've got work, I've got kids, I've got other stuff mm. going on, whatever. And it's like you deal with stress by putting yourself in stressful situations and then coming through it. Totally. And it makes that easier. Like, like it's never going to go away. You're always going to be stressed by something. Yeah. But how you deal with it can become better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think planning's probably got a huge thing to do as well because we can all have, we can all plan amazingly, right, day to day. But there's going to be days where something else lands on your plate, something else has happened you still got to do this, you still got to do that. It's going to be stressful, right? There will be stressful days, but, you know, we've just got to, just got to remember, you know, that stress will always be there. It might be, might be bigger, might be smaller than other days, but we can get through it because, you know, it's just a stressor. We can deal with it. We've done these things before um, and it's made us stronger. So we can do it. 100%. So I think that, that really, I mean, I wasn't expecting to go that deep into it. That no, that, I'm sweating I'm here. Honestly, like, I, I mean, like, I thought this was just going to be a, a conversation about this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. oh, I'm like, I'm like, this guy, this, we need to get this guy to the top of the card, man. What's going on with this guy? <laughs> um, but I, so, so to go back to go back to wrestling, one of the things I wanted to talk about was ICW and how that's been built up. Right, I was thinking about this earlier on, and the fact that you've got obviously like, guys like Drew and Cradle. Who, who, you know, and, and Lionheart and, and uh, all these guys, all these originals that sort of built up this company and and, be, and and made it into what it is today. And it's like, do you now, when you see guys like Drew being at the top of the card in WWE, you know, headline WrestleMania, and Cradle is obviously, he kind of transcended the, the whole thing, essentially. Mm. He's like the Scottish Dusty Rose, that's the way yeah. I think <laughs> um, Guys like that is a like, now that now that that as that goes on and they've sort of laid laid that foundation of this big platform now, is there like a now that there's a bunch of new guys, younger guys like yourself, looking sharp comes to mind because me and him went to school and I remember how much he wanted to be a wrestler. So yeah, it comes to my mind right away. But guys like that were is there like a like a hunger in the locker room where you're like we're now having to create keep this going and create the next big thing and create the next big stars. Is there like a pressure where you go? Now that they've set the bar and now that you can see how far they've pushed it, we, we really have to get this going. So as the, as the younger guys coming through, do you do you feel that? Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. If you were to, to give me two scenarios, so the one we're in right now, which is filled with pressure to perform and to hit targets and, and to do whatever, and then give me one without, where there's no pressure, you just go out and do your own thing, I would take the first option every single time. Because if you don't have pressure... Me personally, I thrive under pressure. So if I'm going to tape and write, and uh, and the the producers in Dallas is like, listen, we need this from you. We you need you to do this, 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 and this. And you know that's that's a lot of pressure. I've maybe not done that before. I maybe got to to remember certain cues, certain times, whatever it might be. I love that man. I absolutely love that. Give me all the pressure. Give me everyone else's pressure. Let them perform without it, and I'll take all their pressure on my back and watch me knock out the park. You know, Perfect. pressure, I just love it, man. There is a pressure there, but I wouldn't have it any other way. We've had all these guys that have obviously went before us and, and they've given us that platform. You know, I'm not naive to think that we'd be where we were without them. We would probably catch up because we've got a lot of talent on there and we've got guys that work hard, but we wouldn't be where we are right now without them. And, uh, you know, hats off to them. I, I respect everyone who's who's went before me. I wouldn't get to live this dream if it wasn't for them. 
Um, and yeah, the pressure is to be as good as them, as impossible as that may sound, because those are some talented guys. <laughs> that's yeah. the aim, you know, and uh, that's where the challenge lies. And it's great. I love it, man. I love it every single yeah. day. There's, there's, there's more Scottish wrestlers now in, in the big companies than there ever has been before, and it's mainly through ICW. You know, yeah. and, and you're talking about, like, the way that you're talking about that, like, that whole dealing with pressure side is, is all relevant back to everything you were saying about where your mind's at and the way you look at things and your whole perspective on things. Yeah. So being able to deal with pressure comes from your kind of clear, clear mind and understanding where exactly you want to be, but, like, when you look at the the actual group of guys you've got, you devote. It seems like that. It seems like that mentality is widespread through the whole locker room. You know I mean? Yeah, and I mean it's difficult when it comes to now, right? Because the the, the current set we have, um, we don't really mix with a lot of the other guys, okay? Because obviously we've got social distancing and stuff, and we come in and do separate blocks. So I can't really speak for anyone else. But I, all I need to do is is look at the product. Uh, you know, it's doing great on the network. It's, it's now on Peacock TV in America, which has got 33 million subscribers across the US, right? Which is mental. No, no, so it's a great bit of business, but but yeah, that's that's what it's all about. You know, it's about having that that drive. And it's it'd be so easy, you know, there was, there was probably a moment a few months back on one of the tapings where I went out to do a segment or a, a promo to go on the network. Um, and it was okay. It wasn't great wasn't terrible but it wasn't it wasn't my best and there was maybe a couple of murmurs that i heard um probably backing up that 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 kind of thought that i had in the back of my head that it wasn't so good that i heard and um that could have that could have stopped me because i could feel that that kind of creeping back i could feel myself almost getting upset you know you're going out there in front of a sort of in front of live rolling cameras and you maybe overhear someone thinks you aren't good and it puts that doubt back into your mind. And all of a sudden, everything that you felt before comes back. And you're like, right, shit. Yeah. Now we've got to deal with this here and now because that's this is a challenge. And before you know it, we have someone coming through, one of the producers like, you're on in two minutes, you need to go and do it, such and such. And you have no time to prepare. So within that two minutes, I could have said, look, I can't do it. This isn't for me. Um, I'm, I'm not really feeling it. And I could have went on my way and not done it. What I did do was I thought, nah, I don't think so, mate. Not a chance. Watch me go out and now knock this out of the park and prove to you that it was just a blip. Because we all have blips, right? It happens in work life, um, personal life, whatever it is. And we have um, we have these performances that maybe may subpar at times, but it's about how we make the next one count, you know? So watch me go out and, and knock this out of the park in this 20-minute match. And and you know do everything that I'm asked and, and tick all the boxes. You know, watch me do it. Yeah. And then come back. Don't 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 even say anything to me. Just watch me do it. <laughs> after I failed a minute ago, that's where I get the buzz, man. You're letting a fire in me, then, man. I'm like, oh, man, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm Where's like, my man. trunks? Where's the spandex? <laughs> well, the, I mean, the, there are there are like I had a guy in here a while ago, and he was talking he was talking about you and and your coach now. See, see, see the coach. How did you and him come together, like for this, for what you're doing now? Like so, the whole, funny story, the man. Right, we actually knew each other before. Um, so I was brought into ICW in 2019 for a one-off match. Okay, so I went and I done what I was asked to do. I wasn't contacted again for probably about a year, um, maybe a little bit less, and coach was always there. He's done amazing things in ICW. He was with Mark Coffey, the at the Polo Promotions won the tag titles, Jackie Polo, DCT, who had won the, the world heavyweight title, right? So Coach has done amazing things, and I, I kind of knew him before, because we had that, we both uh, supported Rangers, right? So we had that kind of back and forth banner. And he messages me one day, and he says, um, can't wait for the boys to hook up again. And I'm like, what was that meant for me? What was that? So I just put back a couple of laughing emojis. I thought maybe sent it to someone else. And then he's, he messaged me again a couple of days. He's like buzzing for this. I'm like, mate, what is it you're on about here? Like, are you meant to text me? And he told me, he's like, look, this is what's happening. You're coming in and uh, you're, you're, you're going to be my guy. We're going to work together and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I was like, this is amazing. This is so, so good, man. So good. So we went in for the first um, show and this was still when it, there was live crowds. And we had, uh, we had a promo to do, which is essentially goes in as a live feed. 
So it's when you you know it comes up on the screen, right? You're not actually in the ring. You film it backstage, and it gets played on the screen so that the fans can see it. And Dallas says to me, he says, "Look, you've got ninety seconds. Go make a name for your, for yourself." I'm like, right? What can I say here? What can I say? You know, I'm racking my brain, <laughs> racking my brain. So we finished the promo. We cut this long promo, and the very last thing we said, I said, "We are," and Coach said, "The people," mm-hmm. and the place just went. <gasps> What do you say? <laughs> you know, half of it was cheering, half was booing, and it was just great, man. And um, it just kind of clicked. We were, yeah. we were trying so hard to think about what we could do, what we could do. And we're like, you know what? We're both we're both big blue nosies. Let's just do that. Let's just be ourselves. Um, and that's how it started, man. And uh, yeah, we haven't really looked back since. So a couple of haters out there, and that's fine. That's fine. We're all about <laughs> getting reactions, so... We're good with that, man. That's amazing, man. I mean, like the whole way that came about is so is so clever as well because it's like you're going to get people. People are going to react to that, you know. It's always going to get your reaction with the certain Avengers and certain dynamic, and um, it's like the fact that you had that. It all kind of came, it seems like it all kind of came together really in a rush, yeah. and you had you didn't have much time to think about it. So to to think of that on your feet is is really impressive, man. I, like listening to that, I'm like. I thought I was going to hate that study being a big Celtic fan last time. And I'm like, I was actually like, I, I can't help but love it. Like, the wrestling fan of me can't help but love it. You know, I'm like, brilliant. And we, we were kind of probably nervous as well because, you know, it could go one way or the other, but it got a reaction. And, and that's what it's all about, man. You know, telling a story and making people react. So Definitely. And I think most, like, see when you look at all the other great characters in wrestling, it all came from being yourself. Definitely, like, man. Stone Cold was definitely like just an enhancement of Stone Cold. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, <laughs> and those are the best characters. You know, it's just people who are turned up. The volumes turned up. They're passionate. They're enthusiastic, and they've got that thing that just makes people talk. You know. Brilliant. And you mentioned they were having like like a, like a few haters and stuff like that. And and there, there was like I mentioned before when Mudguard was in here, he uh, was talking about he was talking about the coach and yourself. And I, it was funny for me because I didn't know what was going on because I'm sitting there like, and he's obviously kind of calling us out and I'm sitting going, this is getting quite intense. I wasn't expecting like a wrestling call out here, man. This, sure. is, this has been going on for a while, man, right? And, you know, me and Bungard have gone back and forth in social media. Now, the thing is, this has probably been going on for about 18 months. And you know how many times he's turned up to ICW since I've arrived? Zilch. Zero, All zero. Right. He's talking about, you know, he needs to sign a contract from Dallas. He's like, Dallas, send me the contract. Mate, just turn up. You know, he knows he knows where we are. We've been filming in the, the, uh, the asylum for the past, well, what, seven, eight months? He's not yeah. he's not turned up. He knows where it is. I've told him, just, just come along. We'll worry about contracts after. <laughs> Jump in the ring and we'll see. But, you know, um, it's obviously a big risk to him. And um, there's obviously a lot of a lot of things he needs to think about. You know what happens if he turns up and uh, and uh, you know something bad happens, then that might not go well for his his MMA career. So you know I understand, man. You know I get it. He's got a lot of things to to think about. But all I'm saying is he knows where we are, and the invite's always there. So. Well, that, I mean that sounded like a challenge was laid in there. I don't know, but uh, you know because he was talking about wanting wanting to bring the real fights to it, as if as if you know you guys couldn't take the punches. Now and stuff like this is the. Th- I respect any athlete in the world that that does anything that that requires that amount of effort. And one of my one of my best mates is is an MMA fighter as well, right? So I understand, um, you know the the work that they have to go through. But let's not downplay wrestling. We don't have any fight camps, so we don't have a match and then take six seven weeks off and then do another six week camp to prepare for the next one. We are just we have to stay ready all the time. We don't have the luxury of having this downtime and then doing this all in fight camp. Every day is a fight camp because we mm-hmm. wrestle every weekend. Some guys wrestle every night. You know, we don't have, we can't, you know, let's not beat around the bush and think that wrestling is some sort of easy uh turn up and, and just fit in. It doesn't work like that, man. I respect MMA. I respect um, everything that, that Bungard's doing. Um, but to say that, you know, he's going to waltz into wrestling and, and be easy... Mm-hmm. He's he's got it he's got it bang wrong man bang wrong and uh, you know he might find it out one day. Well, the, <laughs> the thing about it as well is you know with you being a big big Rangers fans and him obviously being a big Celtic fan the there is that extra edge to it where that that's always going to be real no matter how scripted it is like you know 
Celtic Rangers fans don't like each other normally. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I've told so him, man, that, you know, whenever, he, whenever he wants to come, you know, bring a fresh Celtic strip, you know, and we'll imprint it in the ICW <laughs> canvas for him if he wants. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, no, but uh, see, that's the thing. Like, to me, it's really confusing because you seem like such a nice guy. Being a Rangers fan just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I get that quite a lot. I get that quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, I'm, I'm sitting here like, this doesn't seem right. You can't even, uh, like, it seems like, you know how that scene was still game where Tam's, you know, he's obviously, the whole thing with him is he's cheap and he has a toaster and it yeah, shocks him. Yeah. I feel like you need to be shocked at the wedding of Celtic trip, like something's got to happen to you. No like, way, man. Listen, was, you come on an ICW show when we're back up and running, you will see, but you will not like me, I can guarantee you that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be sitting there and be like, this guy is, I don't like this guy yeah. at all. Like, <laughs> Who's this? This is not Jason. Um, because he did, like, the thing I noticed about it was, he, like, and I remember, like, looking, Chapman mentioned this as well, like, he did specifically call out your manager and not, necessi not necessarily you yourself. And I was like, and what he, what looking, Chap mentioned about it was, it was like, why is he calling out the manager and not the wrestler? As if he was maybe tentative about actually having a proper wrestler match. Well, right? that tells a story, man. If you're looking at that from the outside, right? That tells a story. Um, you want me? I mean, what I'll, what what'll I do? Go and challenge a medic over at Bellator. You want to <laughs> challenge a commentator at UFC? What's the point in that? that they don't fight. Coach yeah. doesn't fight. He's a coach. He's a manager. Fight me. Exactly. I mean, by the way, also that <laughs> I'm just realizing that I came so that came across slightly tricky for me <laughs> towards, towards towards one guard, and I'm like, I don't want any of that heat. Just hey, you, you, hey, you don't want that smoke, <laughs> man. Stay at the kitchen. I mean, he's gonna come for you now. I, I I mean I know I'm in a wheelchair, but I'm pretty sure I could do wear a manager that's like pretty out of shape and all that. To be fair, um, <laughs> to be fair, you know what I mean, coach, coach actually. So he used to be an active competitor in wrestling. He's been about for a long time. He's done a lot of good things. Um, he used to be he used to be badass back in the day, man. Coach, that so you can get the job done. I think if uh, I think so. yeah, if he was to take, strap the old the old boots up again, man, he, he could go. Maybe we'll see. You never know. You never know. I don't know because like see. You know, personally, looking at stuff, I was watching you just, and I was like, you can barely really move anymore these days, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know I'm getting a bit tricky, but like, like being in a wheelchair, you, you look at something like that and you go, I might not be able to walk, but I could probably like move better than him at this point. <laughs> so, so, you know. You could, man. You could, right? So, but here, listen, when Walter Smith <laughs> delivered the last title before Sir Stephen Gerrard... Right, could you have, could uh, could someone have probably beat him at football? Probably. You know, he's not there to play football. You know, he's yeah. there to manage and make the team win. That's what coach is there to do. He was good back in the day. Walter Smith was probably good back in the day, you know. Sure. But this is where we're at. Could you probably move better than coach? <laughs> yeah, probably. But we're not going to get into that, Look, you know. The thing is, if we had a fight, he'd need a wheelchair more than me. That's oh, a hey, that's <laughs> fight. I think you'd try to set up a tag team match saying. or something. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ah, you're trying like, to team with Bungard well, here, aren't well, you? Bungard needs a manager just as much as you do. Ah, you, you try to get on that payday, aren't you? I'm just, I know, I know just, you're saying, game, I'm just saying. I know your game. Try like, to get on that payday. He knows what I am. And, and the thing is, as well, is, you know, I, I can I can talk. I can talk. This podcast proves that I can yeah, talk. Yeah, man. Nah. Um, especially when it comes to actually... Talking shit. <laughs> I can talk a lot you of shit. You can maybe talk for Bungard. It would maybe make sense then if you were a spokesperson. That's exactly, that's exactly the whole point of this. So, uh, no, no, like, I, you see, the thing is, is, is that especially when you're MMA, I feel like the whole, you want to keep that whole order of the tough guy and totally. look at, I mean, look at Lesnar and Heyman, you know, you want that kind of dynamic. So, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll happily be his mouthpiece, but like. There you go. You can maybe tweet for him as well, man. That'd maybe make an improvement on the old social side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Come oh. up, man. He might, he might offer just, you a little I, I just thought I would, I just thought I would put that in there because, oh, uh, wow. because, you know, when I look at, especially if it, I mean, with all due respect, if it is the two of you that, like, he goes against, I, I would feel pretty comfortable taking on the coach, you know what I mean? Well, that's fine. So, Listen, you, so. I'll uh, I'll hook you up with coach's <laughs> details. You guys can thrash this out. But yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, coach is always down. I feel like coach is going to come here and put me through this. Table. <laughs> so he's probably still... behind this curtain. He's going to come out there with a stash and just pop you oh, through. Oh man! So I uh, that was fun. But what what actually got you into wrestling? Like, who's your who's your inspiration to be a wrestler? Um, this is a weird one. So. Growing up in primary school, I had a lot of friends that kind of spoke about wrestling. Um, I had one mate that was really, really, really into wrestling. Had like all the old WCW tapes, had all the pay-per-views and stuff. And whenever there's like a pay-per-view on, remember back in the day, 
the WWE pay-per-views, pay you used to get them for free sometimes on Channel 5, then they'd move on to Sky Sports, and we used to go up and watch them, and he got me big into wrestling, um, and then, you know, my mum and dad sort of got me DVDs for Christmas and stuff, the older I got, and I started watching wrestling, and then I really, really got into it big time. Uh, a few of my mates were the same, we actually built our own wrestling ring in the back garden, right? This was a shocker, an absolute shocker. So we had a trampoline, we had four big posters, one of our mates... His granddad owned like a recycling company. So they had like loads of wood, loads of ply boards and stuff like that. So we got like four big posts, like sort of boards around the middle and then like made sort of the three ropes. So we had like our own wrestling ring. It was absolutely tragic, man. But that probably spurred me on. And then uh, I found out about a local wrestling school, probably about 20 minutes down the road from where I am. Um, you know, started training there. Um, eventually they gave me a little a little break. I, I, I'd done some shows with them. That they ran sort of up and down the country. Um, and then, yeah, transitioned over to uh, FPWA, which is the sort of uh, the latest wrestling school in Fife, just to sort of keep everything, you know, ticking over, continue learning. Um, and then, yeah, eventually, you know, got picked up by ICW, done shows. And, you know, I've been lucky enough at, that, at sort of this stage of my career to have, being able to wrestle up and down the country for for lots of different promotions and 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 wrestle lots of top top tier talent. So yeah, I've been lucky, but it's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, I mean, you've obviously came a long way in a short period of time. It's it's it's, it's impressive to see. Like, and you look at it and you go, especially with wrestling, because like I said before, I think wrestling is the the graft of it all is really underappreciated. Yeah, I actually struggled when I first started wrestling, and I don't know what it was. I mean, this was probably back in. 2016, 17, when I first turned up to training, um, it was hard. You know, you go, you, you, you turn up to wrestling training for the first, first time, you're like, man, I can't wait to powerbomb someone. Or I can't <laughs> wait to pedigree someone. It doesn't work like that, man. You know, you got to learn the basics. You got to learn the basic sort of fitness side of things. And it was really probably the, 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 the thing that I've done that's furthest out of my comfort zone in my entire life. Um, in terms of sort of transitions. You know, I played sports when I was younger, but making this transition into wrestling was hard. I used to go up and sit outside the training building, see all the other students go in and not go in because I was scared. I was uncomfortable with the thought of doing this. I used to sit in the car, watch everyone else go in and drive home. I used to do that all the time, man. There was times where I would, I would persuade myself to go in and there was times where I just couldn't do it. Because I was just so far out my comfort zone, I just did not like it. It was a time where I actually went inside the building. Could the door was shut? You would go in. It's like a, a sort of unit that's rented out. I could, I could hear that they'd already started doing the drills, and I just didn't have the confidence to go in. Man, I turned around and went home. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it was just mental. But it's one of those things that you know I just kind of had to just persevere with because it got easier. I got to know the guys, but. It just shows you, like, back in, you know, a few years ago, um, I struggled with things like that. But you kept coming back. I think that's the biggest lesson in that story. Exactly. I kept coming back. And if I hadn't kept doing that, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't be doing the things. I wouldn't be on the WWE Network. I wouldn't have done the cage match that we'd done at the end of March, you know, against a former world heavyweight champion. So I guess that, it's, you know, for people that are going through those similarities, just persevere you know, just look for the, the goal or the light at the end of the tunnel and it gets better and it gets easier and it's bloody worth it as well when it happens. 100%. I mean, you mentioned that cage match and it made me think, like, see when you're wrestling these different matches, matches like, see from a wrestler's point of view, like, a fan, you're watching it, you're going, steel cage is going to be fun, that will be exciting to watch that. Like, how much does it change the actual dynamic of the match and how you work it? It's difficult. And there's probably that level too as well. You know, the first time we seen the cage, and so they, they had barbed wire wrapped around the top of the cage as well so that we couldn't get out. So the first time that you go, and this is coming from someone who's relatively fresh in the business, haven't really done any of these types of matches. Um, you go in there, you see that cage, it's tall, you know, it's proper, you know, it's, it's metal. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a steel cage, sorry. And there's barbed wire wrapped around the top and you're thinking, oh, that, that gets you going, man. That gets you going. Um... It's difficult, but it, it, it you know it's 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 made easier by the people that you, that you you work with. You know, a uh, coach has been there and done it as well. So you know he's constantly giving me talking points. He's like, look out for this. Remember, do that. You know, and it's easy. And working with guys like you know like they've got like the uh, Scott Reed, who's a producer, and obviously Dallas, who runs it. 
these guys have been there and done it. You know, they've produced a million matches over and they know what they're looking for and they can talk you through it. And guys at DCT that I was in there with, been there and done it, knows how to do it. Thomas Cairns, the referee, been there and done it, done it at the highest level, worked for WWE, knows how to do it. So when you've got these guys that you're working with, that task becomes much easier. See, when you get in the midst of the match and you're kind of, you start to feel comfortable with what's going on, do you have the freedom to just kind of do things that you think work in that moment or is it all kind of planned out beforehand? Sure, man. No. So, you you know, you've got that, you've got that freedom. Um, I mean, it would probably be unhealthy for anyone to, to, to have everything completely structured out like yeah. that. Um, yeah, you've, you've got that freedom, man. So when you, you go in there and, you know, you get to that certain point in the match, it's on you. You know, yeah. you can have your you can have your objectives and your pinpoints that the guys want you to to hit in terms of we want you to do this, get this over, tick this box. But it's down to you, man. You know, you've got to you've got to plan that, you've got to run with it, and you've got to take ownership of the full match. You know, it gets to the point of that where um, you know, DCT's uh, you know, on the floor. What am I gonna do now? You know, he's not gonna tell me what to do. Coach is not gonna shout, do this. You know, it's it's on me, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I've got to think, I've got to use the little experience I've got. And 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 yeah, get a bit get a bit of creativity flowing, and uh, yeah, just just see where it takes us, you know. But it, it's difficult, but it, it's a nice challenge. It's a nice to have challenge, I like to say. Yeah, because like, have you ever had a situation where you've had to like change it, it's like change the way things are going? It's not going to plan. Like, the the fans aren't because it, the hardest thing to me, it seems like when you're watching wrestling, right, is actually getting the fans into it, you know, and yeah. in tune with what's going on. Especially now because there's so much of it. So, and the cards are so long. Look, you look at WrestleMania; it's like over two days now. But like, totally, a couple of years ago, it was like you had to stay up for like seven hours. Seven hours, right? It's like a shift, right? So, w- what's important is every match on the card has a responsibility and a role. So, if you're talking about, for example, the match before the main event, we don't want that match to go out and be a five star classic, because then, or I mean, not it's not going to be a good match. But you don't want it to be, you know. 30 minutes long, they're hitting everything, they're doing this, 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 and this. The main event comes out and they do the exact same. Because you've already watched that, right? So it's your responsibility, depending on where you are on the card, to ensure that you're telling the story throughout the night and leaving stuff for the main event, because it's the main event, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's where it's important. You know, and again, I'm, I'm no veteran by any stretch of the imagination, but it's where we see guys, you know, going out now and they're maybe disappointed being you know a certain place on the card or not getting the same reaction as the main event man it's not your job to get that reaction it's the main event's re- job to get the main event reaction <laughs> yeah you know yeah, yeah. um i don't go out there i don't want people to cheer me i want people to boo me i want people to cheer for the guy that that's that's against me you know when that guy pins me or whatever i want the crowd to cheer i don't yeah. want them to cheer me that's not what i'm there to do so and, and, and it's things like this happen all the time and you know we could go in so for example last year uh, we wrestled at a show ICW Gonzo and one of the guys came back for his first match. We'd, we'd planned about 20 minutes and in the first minute I broke his nose. Legit. And he, right. he, he couldn't continue. So his nose oh, is, is over the other side of his face, you know, blood all running down. He can't see, you know, his, his eyes are watering and the referee's like, listen, you can, we, can't, we can't finish this. We, we got to yeah, cut it now. Yeah, cut it Things now. like that happen, yeah. man. Disappointing, yeah, but, you know, you just have to um, do it to the best of your ability, and 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 you know, be be quick on quick on the mark, so to speak. It's it's mad how just one wrong move can can change the whole complexion of it all. It does, um, man. Yeah, and it, again, it's such a dangerous, it's such a dangerous setup that it, that that broken nose literally happened out of nowhere. That was we were transitioning into something else. I wasn't even hitting him with anything. We were running towards each each other, transitioning into another part of the match, and boom his nose broke, elbowed right to the nose and, you know, blood everywhere. You, you can't see where he's going. And we've, we've, we've got a choice, you know, we either go another 18 minutes, we do more damage to him, start slipping on blood, um, or, you know, we cut it short and live to live another day. That's what it's all about, man. But that, that, that all comes back to, like, you, when you took it, look at the actual wrestlers that, that are at the top of the card, they've all went through things like that. They've all had experiences like that where you have to learn from those things and like, develop it. Are you, do you, how far away do you feel that you're, are from your goals like where do you want to be where is it you see yourself in the in the company so the goal for me is to to be signed by wwe you know so i want to go and i want to wrestle for wwe um i want to work on all of their brands work with all their guys and, and be trained by their coaches because they've got the best coaches in the world right they've got the best setup that's the long-term goal for me the short-term goal is to just 
continue what I'm doing, work hard, get on this main event level. Um, I, you know, I said for so long, just just throw me in the deep end and just watch me swim. And they did that with the cage match, and I felt like I was able to swim. Um, and that's what it's all about, man. You know, I just want to be at that level consistently, main event. But as I said, I appreciate there's different roles and responsibilities on the show, and that's fine. But long term, we want to get to the WWE, we want to get to WrestleMania, and we want to be the second uh, Scott to win that title. Well, I mean, that's some goal, but you've obviously, you've, you've, you're on the right path to that, I can tell that. And uh, I had to cut off just before 55, because I'm sick of that fucking ah, number. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm loving it, man. I'll tell you that for free, I'm loving it. And the uh, the game uh, Sunday was, was even better. A nice little sweet end to the season, I would say. <laughs> Well, see, that's we could probably talk about that, but I don't really want to talk about that. So, <laughs> ah, <yeah>. so, so, <laughs> so, God knows what the fuck's going on with Celtic, man. Oh, but, uh, man. Um, but it's a uh, tough watch. <laughs> tough a, watch, man. That's a big, um, there's a big overhaul required over at Celtic. I don't think that's going to be any quick fix. You got to get someone in the door. You got to get new players because I think a lot of the players are going to go out. And um, yeah. yeah, and I don't think Rangers are going to stand still either, man. I think Gerard's made his stance clear that we need more signings too. So. Could be an interesting well, few no, seasons. You enjoy your COVID title, mate, and then um, move back to <laughs> no, no more. No more. That big Ashik is next to it. Yeah. <laughs> like, <come on. laughs> no, I, and uh, like, see, that's the thing is, is I've always been wary of not talking about football too much because it's a very divisive subject. Sure. But it's like, but it's also like making people realise that you can actually, you can have conversations about football. Without it, we just can sure, do that man. without it being a pure. Yeah, and I think. Especially during like the whole COVID thing, football became like, such an important thing for people. Yeah, and it's like it's always such a you're seeing all this kind of defensiveness. But I always think that you can the only time that really matters is the ninety minutes for the football match. Oh, that totally I could man. talk to you. I could talk to you about something Rangers all day. Um, it's listen, man. We're both passionate football fans. Yeah, yeah we support the opposite sides, but we can sit down and have a conversation about exactly. football. You know, and it's it's cool. Um. And I think that's a good thing to have as well because you see so many people that you have a conversation with and you can't finish it <laughs> because it just gets you like, you know what, man? Nah, it's not for me. Like I was out on, on Saturday there. I was speaking to a guy. This is a Rangers fan, right? Show me his Rangers tattoos. We spoke about wrestling for a bit. This is weird. But anyway, this was, so bear in mind, we've got the old farm game the next day. And he says, what do you think your predictions are? Well, I was like, well, you know, I fancy Rangers. And this is a Rangers fan, by the way. I think Celtic are going to win 5-0, he says. I'm like, well, this is a strange one, right? This is as strange as it is, right? Bearing in mind, the guy's covered in Rangers tattoos. Um, Celtic have, at this point, had only scored one goal against Rangers in the entire season. Sorry to bring it up. They hadn't beat Rangers since 2019. So I'm like, so how do you think Celtic are going to win 5-0 at Ibrox? He says, well, who's going to stop them? I'm like, mate, where is this conversation? Like, are, you doing this to <laughs> make, are you doing this to make me bite? Like, are you trying to get a reaction? Yeah. Um, you know, and 4-1 later... You know, but that, honest, this is—I just don't understand. Just have a normal conversation yeah, about yeah, football. Yeah, you know? that, is, that's, that is a really weird one. Like, it's so I weird, mean, especially given the fact I assume he was trying to get a reaction. You know, yeah. maybe we spoke about wrestling. That's maybe something to do with uh, it. And, uh, cut I, a promo I'm, on you. I'm always careful, you know, speaking about that stuff. But but yeah, it's good to have a conversation <laughs> like we just have about football in a normal fashion without <laughs> saying you know ridiculous things exactly. like that. Because because there are like th I mean there there are like. Areas of it on both sides where you're probably like, I don't know about that. Don't right. know about that. Do you sure, know what I mean? Sure. And I'm obviously I, I'm a Celtic season deck holder, and I, I agree with you know a lot of these things. It's just, it's just that you can see there's fans on both like that just end up kind of going a bit too far over the edge. You know totally. What I mean? And we need to remember at the end of the day, it's just football. We're passionate about it, right? And it's yeah. our life revolves around it. But let's not cross the line, man. Not, and I said that to you, you know, when we spoke about doing your your um, your charity. And by the way, I want to put this on record and say, if you ever do anything again for the Celtic charity, message me because I will one hundred percent do it, man. I'd love to raise money for for a Celtic foundation. Um, I think um, it's good to have that banter back and forward, but you know, when we get over that line, man, nah, I'm I'm not interested. And I think what you did. It was amazing. Um, I would have struggled insanely with it. And uh, yeah, I think you should be really, really proud of it, man. Because you've done a good job and raised uh, a lot of money for a good cause. So hats off. I really appreciate that, man. That was, that was a nice way to finish, I would yeah, say. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, there you go. There's your finish. <laughs> <laughs> but no, honestly, that was 
one of the one of, one of my favourites off the bat. I can tell you that right now, and you're welcome man. back in any time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Thanks but very much for having me. I'm sure I'll do some sort of crazy charity thing, and, and at some point, once my body's healed for, and I'll heal in about ten years, so yeah. I'll let you know <laughs> how it's going. But yeah. uh, you know, hopefully, um, you'll hear me talking some shit in the microphone at one point. Next <laughs> well, <laughs> fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Always welcome, brother. Always welcome. <laughs> Good stuff, mate. Cheers for that. Thank All you. All right, man. Thank you.